Good morning, Crafty Travelers. It's Lonnie, and today is Tuesday, September the 6th. Kelly and I arrived here at Gold Ranch yesterday, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll post it above. It's not very long. I thank you for watching this video, and uh, I hope you watch it all the way through. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, and if you've the first time you've been uh, to my channel. Thank you for coming. And for all my subscribers, thank you for coming back. And watch through the video. I'd appreciate it. It helps me out. So today's itinerary. First this morning we are going to go to the Donner Museum and see uh, what that's all about, which I kind of know. I've watched videos about it, but I've never been there. And neither is Kelly, so it'll be fun. And then after that, we'll probably go find some lunch somewhere in Reno, and we're going to go to a couple of fabric shops. So this may be two videos. We'll see how long it goes. But, uh, yeah, we're going to go to a couple of fabric shops and then come back to camp and have dinner. I've been here before. Ernie and I came with our passport trailer in August of 2020. And I'll try and find that video, and if I find it, I'll post it up here. And that'll give you a little more detail of the Gold Ranch RV Resort. Okay, well, i got to get ready for the day. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. I am a 71-year-old woman who loves to camp and travel. Most of the time, I take my little schnauzer sneakers with me. I belong to four lady camp groups, and one I started in my area. One of the reasons we bought the Mini Winnie was so I could go more on my own, or with my lady camper groups. My channel, Crafty Traveler, isn't only about crafting, it's about being crafty smart when traveling, camping, quilting, and doing crafts. Okay, are we ready? Yep. Okay, we're headed out. I got my hat. Got your hat. I got a mask. Yep. I got masks. There's masks in here. And before we get into the coffee shop, there's this bull statue here made of all kinds of gears and parts. It looks kind of cool. And here's the Gold Ranch coffee bar where Starbucks is. Here's the sunny side of the bull. Sun glistens on his back. Our first stop, of course, is to Starbucks. And we got Two for one coupon from the RV park. So I'm gonna get a frappuccino and Kelly's gonna get a tea. And through those doors is the casino. First right, it says boat rentals, picnic swimming mile and a half of beachfront road just go slowly enjoy the views okay well yeah, thank you so much coast. okay yeah, until, for, until 10. Yeah. that's why we wanted to get here early good <laughs> oh, God. we were full at 10 saturday and sunday oh i'm sure with the so weekend enjoy your drive along the thank way. you so much
Donner Lake. People out paddle boarding, boating. This is the boat rental place and skidoo rental place. And I think they rent kayaks and everything. It's been a while since I've been to Donner Lake and I've never really camped here. I would like to camp here someday at the state park. Downer Memorial State Park is a state park of California on the west side of the Sierra Nevada mountains. The site, the Donner Camp, where members of the ill-fated Donner Party were trapped by weather during the winter of 1846 and 1847. Caught without shelter or adequate supplies, members of the group resorted to cannibalism to survive. The Sierra Nevada site has been designated a National Historic Landmark. The State Park contains the Immigrant Trail Museum and the Pioneer Monument dedicated to the travelers of the Immigrant Trail. First Visitor Center at the Memorial in 1919, visitors were stealing stones from the Pioneer Monument pedestal. So they wanted to build a monument or a museum and make it illegal to do that. I haven't found the monument yet. Many crossed before. Other groups of immigrants crossed the route successfully before the Donner Party made it famous with its failure. Some of the things that they carried with them in their trunks couldn't carry much in those little wagons. Less than we can in our vans and RVs for sure. Years after the fact, Eliza Donner wrote about the wagon wreck that she lived through when she was only thir three years old. Her father was walking the wagon down a steep hill and almost reached the base of the incline when the axle to the four wheels broke and the wagon tipped over on its side, tumbling contents upon her and Georgia, father and uncle, in alarm, rushed to their rescue. Lots of tragedy trail. The Donner Dreams. Immigrant families like those in the Donner Party embrace change, dreaming of new lives in the West.
now I'm going into the theater to watch the movie about the donut party. And here is the theater. And since pioneer times, a major route into California. Each day, thousands of cars and trucks speed across the Sierra on a six-lane interstate, following the smooth pavement westward as it drops downward into the fertile Sacramento Valley, or eastward towards the desolate Nevada desert. At the east end of the lake, standing among the pine trees, is a large statue commemorating a different group of travelers. Travelers who came at a time before the freeway, when only a red and wagon road crossed on our pass, when no snow plows disturbed the winter silence. George Donner and his brother Jacob were in their 60s, old to be uprooting their families, older still to be facing the hardships of an overland journey. In spite of the odds against them, their spirits responded to the westward call, and in April of 1846, they joined the stream of people bound for California. The brothers started westward with three wagons apiece and $10,000 sewn into a quilt. Tamsin Donner wrote to friends back home. Our journey so far has been pleasant. The roads have been good. The food plentiful. We feel no fear of Indians and our cattle graze quietly around our Indeed, if I do not experience anything far worse than I have yet done, I shall say that trouble is all in getting started. As the wagons rolled through South Pass in the Rocky Mountains, there was talk of a shortcut. A young land developer named Lansford Hastings had scouted the unknown country south of the Great Salt Lake. He enthusiastically promoted a new route which he claimed would save travelers 350 miles. Excited by the prospect of a shorter route, the Reeds and the Donners turned off the main road. They were eventually joined by other families, the Irish-born Greens, the Eddies, the Graves, the McCutcheons, the German Kiesberg family, the Murphys, and others. George Donner was elected captain and as tradition dictated, the new company would travel under his name. There were 87 people in the Donner Party, and of those, 42 were children. But his warning went unheeded. The Donners and the others clung to their belief in Hastings and set out in pursuit of the shortcut. Determined as ever to reach California by the quickest route. Four days out of Fort Bridger, the Donner wagons creeped to a halt at the mouth of Weber Canyon which cuts abruptly through the Wasatch Mountain Range. In a bush by the side of the trail, Hastings had left a note. Ahead of them, it said, was a difficult and dangerous passage. He was unsure if even his own party could get through. Send a messenger ahead of him, the note advised, and he would return to take them around by another way. In three weeks, they had covered only 36 miles. When the frightened immigrants regrouped, they found their remaining food would not be enough for the rest of the journey. Charles Stanton, a bachelor, and William McCutcheon, a family man, volunteered to ride ahead to Sutter's Fort in California for supplies. The rest of the Donner Party struggled across Nevada, exhausted and disorderly, bordering on panic. Indians harassed them, stealing or killing some of their oxen. Household woods littered the trail as attempts were made to lighten the wagons. As the oxen gave out, the wagons themselves had to be abandoned. The struggle for survival grew more savage. It was autumn when they reached Truckee Meadows, the present site of Reno. In 1846, it was still a wilderness, but there was grass and water. There, too, they met Charles Stanton and two of Sutter's Indian vaqueros, returning as he had promised with seven mules carrying meat and flour. The country remained at Sutter's Fort, too ill to return. Stanton also brought news of a difficult mountain crossing ahead. Desperately tired, the group rested for five days to gather strength. Although they were still 15 miles from the pass, the Donner family stopped and hastily constructed crude shelters against the storm. Their teamsters and servants stayed with them. 25 people would be snowbound that winter at Alder Creek. 
The main party found the pass solidly covered with snow. They retreated to the lake they had passed a few miles below the summit. Still hoping a thaw would open the pass, the group settled in for the winter. There were three widely scattered cabins made of logs and roofed with ox hides. Each of them housed at least two families, and visiting between the cabins would be rare. Early storms continued to batter the settlers. The few scrawny oxen wandered off, and as food grew scarce, hungry men probed for their carcasses in deep drifts. The daughter party members were not mountain men. They could not catch the fish they saw in the ice block creek, and there was little game. William had shot a grizzly bear, but by December, most of the families were on starvation rations. They had no way of knowing that James Reed and his companion had driven a 30-horse pack train out of Sutter's Fort. His rescue party had floundered to within 18 miles of the summit before being forced to turn back. By now, the stronger members trapped east of the snow-covered fortress began planning their own rescue efforts. In mid-December, 15 people started for the valley settlements. The 10 men and five women, walking on crude snowshoes they fashioned from ox bows, hoped to cover the 50 miles in six days. Each carried one blanket and a few handfuls of jerky. Five days out, Charles Stanton, the only one who knew the route, was overcome with exhaustion and snow blindness. Without him, the snowshoers lost their way in the steep canyons of the American River. On Christmas Eve, a storm hit. They set out the three-day blizzard and huddled under a pile of blankets. Four died. With nothing left to eat, hunger drove the survivors to the desperate act of using the bodies of their companions for food. One month later, an emaciated William Petty, being helped by Indians, appeared at the door of a cabin in the Sacramento Valley. A few miles back of the trail were the remaining five women and the other man who lived through their ordeal. They had survived 33 days on one deer and the bodies of those who had perished. Relief would be slow in coming for the Donner Party. The camp at Donner Lake lay buried under 20 feet of snow, and the passes were choked with tremendous drifts. At no time in the next 100 years would there be a winter to equal the one of 1846. By February, the 52 survivors in the mountains were reduced to eating boiled oxide and bones that had previously been discarded. The first in a series of rescue parties arrived at the lake on February 18th. The seven men traveled on snowshoes, carrying what provisions they could on their backs. They left with 21 people, only those fit enough to walk. Even so, not everyone made it down the mountain. Those at the camps who awaited the arrival of the next rescue party were a little better off than before. The relief effort had become a race against time, and for many, a few days would spell the difference between life and death. James Reed, leading the second relief party, returned with more men. On visiting the camps at Alder Creek, he found his old friend George Donner dying of an infected cut in his hand. He was shocked to discover evidence of cannibalism both there and at the lake camps. Only two families would survive intact, the Reeds and the Breeds. Of those still able to move about, only Lewis Keysburg and Donner Lake, who was suffering from a bad foot, and Tamson Donner, who refused to leave her dying husband at Alder Creek, remained behind. It was March 13th. A month later, as the snow melted and solidified, several men came to salvage what they could of the immigrant's belongings. They found Lewis Keysburg still alive. Although Oxmead had been exposed by the melting snow, he had been subsisting for several days on the body of Tamson Donner. 47 of the 89 people in the Donner Party lived to reach the settlements. 42 did not. 
Some of the survivors, like James Reed and Patrick Green, went on to become prominent citizens in the new state of California. Everything in its path. The stumps have gradually decayed over the years. Now there's a tall, permanent column facing the summit in all kinds of weather. It's a remembrance to those frontier pilgrims who were forced to cope with winter's cruelest elements and deprived of nearly all their basic needs for too long. Rescuers led the strongest survivors over the past, February 27, 1847. Both Patty Reed and her dolls survived the winter of 1846-1847. This is a replica of the doll. The actual doll is now at Sutter's Fort State Historic Park in Sacramento, California. And then they even have a magnifier so you can look at the doll because it's quite small. And here are some buttons and other little things. Looks like a little bowl and spoon from a tea set. Why did women survive? More women than men survived the Donner Party ordeal. For years, people wondered why. Today we know. The age, sex, and family ties influenced the survival. The old and very young die first. Women's smaller bodies give them an advantage because they need fewer calories than the men. And with more body fat, women have larger energy reserves. Women often traveled with their families. Family members pulled together, shared resources, and generally survived longer than the men who traveled alone. Seasonal migration in the Bossa diet changed seasonally in the spring when they lived among shores of Lake Tahoe. Pine nuts, fishing, rodents, berries kept the natives sustained. This display talks about the Native Americans, the Washo, that lived in and around the Sierras. Some of the artifacts and baskets that were used by the natives. Transcontinental Railroad found its route across the sea. Many Chinese immigrants worked on the Transcontinental Railroad and the gold mining started in 1849 at Sutter's Mill in Sacramento. And of course, like any state park or monument, they have a store. This is a black bear, not a grizzly bear. The ranger said a bad taxidermy gave him the hump. Now we're going over to the monument, which is just to the left of the visitor center museum. This plaque represents the space where the Schallenberger cabin site was. It was a small cabin built by 18-year-old Moses Schallenberger and two other men. They were members of the Stevens Townsend Murphy Party of 1844. The first pioneers to take wagons over the Sierra Nevada, opening the Truckee route to the California Trail. The three men had volunteered to remain behind and guard six of the wagons left here by the main party. And 
this is the Downer Monument. And here's what's on the plaque. I don't know if you can read it. It says, Viral to risk and find kindly with all and ready help facing the brunt of fate, indomitable and unafraid. Hi, it's Lonnie with Crafty Traveler. Excuse the air conditioning. It is hot here in Verde, Nevada. Today is September the 6th. And as I said, my next outings were going to be to Donner Museum and State Park and also to some fabric stores. Well, they will be in separate videos. So this one will be of the Donner State Park. And uh, it was a very good experience. It's $10. Actually, it was $9 to park because we're senior citizens. Otherwise, it's 10 And you'll see that we drove through the day use area and took a look at the lake. We met a very sweet couple that were paddle boarding. And they looked like they were senior citizens, too. And they had a really cute Jack Russell Terrier that rode on the paddle board with the lady. So I have a couple of pictures. And the lake was beautiful. It's been a long time since I've been to that lake. A uh, number of years ago, my daughter did an open water swim there. So that was probably around 12 or 13 years ago. So that's how long it's been since I've been there. And I'd never gone through the Donner Museum and seen the memorial. So that was really interesting for Kelly and I both. I hope you enjoyed the video of the Donner Memorial and State Park and Museum. I felt it was very interesting and it's in a beautiful area and the lake is so beautiful. It's right off of I-80 in Truckee or just outside of Truckee. So it's really easy to get to. Now we are here on Tuesday, September the 6th after Memorial Day weekend and the ranger said that the weekend was just packed with people. And people were complaining. It was so crowded. Well, don't go on a holiday weekend. That's why we're here the day after. And there was hardly anybody there. It was wonderful. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. If this is the first time, please subscribe. If you're a return me, a return subscriber, thanks for watching all the way through. Stay crafty, smart, creative, and safe. Bye now. Stay tuned for more videos coming up.